Hello everyone. So today we are going to start our lectures on the MM207 course on phase transformations and heat treatment. I'll be starting with the part 3 that is diffusionless transformations and specifically we'll be talking about martensitic transformations in this part. So here I have given you a few references that you can look up wherever you feel the need to refer to some books or any online material and I have given some more references throughout the lecture for your kind reference. Okay, so when I say the word martensite, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, when I think about martensite, the very first thing that comes to my mind is this particular image of Arya killing the white walker. That is Valyrian steel was the only thing that could kill a white walker. Well, I am a Game of Thrones fan, so I have started with this kind of reference. If you have seen it, it is good. If you have not, we will just skip this part and we will go forward to where this idea of the author came to refer to Valyrian steel. So R.R. Martin, the author of Game of Thrones series, he looked up a lot of historical data and he came up with an analogous of the Damascus steel or the wood steel which has an origin in South India in the 5th century BCE and it was called Uku. By the time this particular steel name went from our country to west, it somehow distorted from Uku to woods steel and now it is known as the Damascus steel as well. So if you look on this particular knife image, you can see these very beautiful flowing images of uh, the microstructure. And this is what gave this steel uh, this kind of name, Damascus and wood steel. So this uh, steel was made of 1.2% carbon and it was known like five, 5th century BC and some say even before that. So the good thing of this steel was that it was strong, it was sharp and it was relatively less brittle. And there are stories and stories about how this steel could cut the feather in two hops without even having a slight trimming area. So it is very beautiful stories. If you read uh, these references that I have given you here, you can uh, look into the detail how this Damascus steel is produced and how it was taken up by different people and how researchers eventually came up uh, with the research from different samples that it was not only in India this steel was made and used actually it was exported from India to the Persian countries Egypt and Greece because we can find a certain kind of uh, remnants which show that ancient Greece and Egypt people and they had they used these kind of knives for carvings made by such kind of blades and the researchers have looked uh, at different kind of microstructure their compositional uh, things of these kind of Damascus steels and their knives and uh, some of these have also found to have carbon nanotubes and uh, some also say that earliest man-made carbon nanotubes were known 2500 years before even the first uh, uh, carbon nanotube was known uh, to the West. So there was a very big myth attached to this particular wood steel uh, that uh, when the swordsmen, the smiths, the blacksmiths used to make this kind of steel, they used to heat the steel to a higher temperature and then then they used to put the steel directly quench it in the blood of a very very healthy slave so the all the strength of the slave would go into the steel but today we metallurgists know that this is not true and even if we don't use a person a real person we just use oil or water to quench our steel we will get martensite if we cool it down from the austenitic temperature very fast and that is 
the story behind this kind of steel as i said it was strong sharp but it was relatively less brittle because it was tempered after the martensite was formed and they used to beat it to higher temperatures and they used to make these kind of steels and it is a high carbon steel as i already told you it is 1.2% carbon a little more than that as well and the first carbon unit man nanotubes were also shown by researchers in such kind of samples so if you want to look it up you can look up these two references and uh, it's not always that it was a martensitic kind of uh, uh, structure that was formed because it was all hit and trial when people were doing it so sometimes it is also perlitic matrix in a high carbon steel that also gives certain kind of different patterns on this steel so i have been speaking about a lot of steel so when i say steel i am talking about the iron iron carbide phase diagram so why are these iron iron carbide phase diagram so important that you are sitting in it's a uh, construction was made with steel if you see around yourself if you see some bottle caps they are made of steel these days a lot of steel bottles are coming into commercial use water bottles then you see these knobs your keys most of these things around you are made up of steel furthermore no other alloy system has been studied in such detail as this particular iron iron carbide system why is it so because from going from bronze age to iron age brought about industrial revolution and researchers have been intrigued by the solid state phase changes in steel which are varied and very very interesting and these systems can eventually be applied to other alloy systems as well so iron carbide actually gives a lot of understanding of other solid state transformations as well so let's look up our particular iron iron carbide phase diagram this is the iron carbon phase diagram that i am sure every one of you has seen many times so if you see this region from 0 to around 2% this is the region where we talk about steels usually the steels that we use majority of them are less than 1% so we are talking about this particular region here and read and steels in the region of 0.2 here to around 0.3 are the ones that are used as structural steels in buildings bridges and in ships steels greater than 1% are used but not so much they are used in razor blades cutlery etc for sharp areas and above this 2.1% to around 6.7% these are all cast iron well cast iron have an additional alloying element that is silicon usually because it's a graphite stabilizer and that is why this cast iron area is here and it is also used in a lot of industrial applications so when we talk about this iron carbon phase diagram we know it has three kind of phases that is an alpha ferrite phase which is a bcc solid solution a gamma austenite phase which is an fcc solid solution a delta which is again a bcc solid solution so we see that in our area of interest right now we'll be talking about basically steel in this particular area this particular area we see the, the uh, with temperature change we have three different phases in the alpha ferrite gamma austenite and delta if we uh, go back to the gibbs phase rule which we know is p plus f is equal to c plus 1 for constant pressure this is an equilibrium phase diagram if you remember and it is at one atmospheric pressure it is at it is made at one atmospheric pressure so this particular p plus f is equal to c plus 1 is valid else it would be c plus 2 if the pressure is not constant 
because there are two, two thermodynamic variables that is pressure and temperature which has to be incorporated into the Gibbs phase rule. So, uh, using this Gibbs phase rule, we can see three invariant points which have zero degree of freedom which are the L plus delta giving us austenite. This is the peritectic point. Then we have the L giving the gamma plus Fe3C, which is the eutectic point, this one. Then we have gamma giving us alpha plus Fe3C, which is the eutectoid point. So these, this is the importance of the iron carbon phase diagram. You can look up what temperature gives us what phase and what is its crystal structure. What is the solid solution made up of? Now let me ask you another question. If I consider only an iron phase diagram which is heated from supposedly 400 degree centigrade to so on, uh, 1400 degree centigrade, then do we only see alpha and gamma systems or do we see something else as well? Well, I am talking about iron system with not a constant pressure. So the Gibbs phase rule being applied is P plus F is equal to C plus 2. So we will see a new kind of a phase diagram with pressure and temperatures also as variable. So we will get another phase that is an epsilon phase of iron. This is a pure iron equilibrium phase diagram. Please see that. So the gamma is still an FCC phase, alpha is still a BGC phase, but an epsilon which is an HCP phase also arises. So when we quench the austenite in this particular pressure regime, we will get an alpha prime martensite and if we quench gamma in this particular pressure regime, then we will get an epsilon martensite. So this is an important thing that you can remember and the epsilon martin site will have an HCP structure. Now let's talk about phase transformations. So what are phase transformations? What phase transformations do you know already? So I'm sure everyone has looked up at such a diagram that is you know liquid can convert liquid phase can convert into a gas phase by the method of evaporation and a gas phase can convert into a liquid phase by the method of condensation. Similarly, a liquid phase can convert into solid phase by solidification and a solid phase can convert into a liquid by melting. Also, the solid can convert into gas by sublimation and gas can uh, convert into a solid phase by deposition. In addition to these kind of a varied uh, phase transformation, you can also have a solid solid transformations in which one solid converts into an another solid. So, when we look at this iron carbon phase diagram and when we are looking at a gamma austenite converting to martensite or gamma converting into perlite, then we are looking at a solid solid phase transformation. So, these can be categorized further into diffusion or diffusion less. Certain transformations they require diffusion and certain transformations are diffusion less. In the part 2 you have seen precipitation, spinodal decomposition all which are civilian transformations and they require diffusion to happen. And in this part 3 we will be talking about modern cytic transformations which are military uh, transformations. These are called military transformations because they take place in the military manner. That is, these transformations take place through atomic movements which are less than one atomic spacing. And these transformations, atoms change their position in a coordinated manner, unlike the civilian ones which are random. So, can you give me an example of diffusion? and diffusion less kind of transformations? Well, the diffusion dependent 
transformations can be of two kinds that is there is no change in the number or the composition of the phases present and the diffusion dependent can happen with the change in composition or the change in phases. So when we say no change in number of composition or phases then these can be solidification of pure metal or any kind of allotropic transformations. And if we look into uh, the diffusion dependent with changes in the composition or the number of phases, then a very good example that we know that gamma austenite changes into alpha plus Fe3C, which is a perlytic growth. These are all diffusion assisted. Uh, dif uh, diffusion assisted phase transformations and diffusion less of course we are studying that part and the diffusion less transformations are the uh, metastable phase is formed and it is formed by very small displacements of the atomic structure these can be martensitic transformations or these can be twinning transformations in which the structure of the uh, the crystal structure of the parent phase changes into a different product phase. So in martensite, the gamma austenite which is FCC, it changes to an BCT structure which actually should be a BCC austenite instead of that it is changing to a BCT crystal structure. As we love the iron carbon phase diagram, so we will take some more examples from the iron carbon phase diagram for the reconstructive uh, phase transformations that are they are assisted by diffusion and displacive where there is an invariant plane stain shape deformation with large shear components and no iron or substitutional solid state diffusion is in these. So these are the three examples one is the Widerman state and ferrite the carbon diffusion during the para equilibrium nucleation and growth benite a carbon diffusion during the para uh, equilibrium nucleation but no diffusion during growth and martensite has di is diffusionless even for nucleation and for growth so we start uh, we stop our lecture here and in the next class we are going to study the driving force behind martensitic transformation its nucleation and growth how it is diffusionless and we look more into the martensitic structure and how these plates and lasts and needle shapes are formed.